Retail inventory management is all about having what you need to meet customer demands, but not having too much of it that mm-hmm. it's going to eat into your cash flow and your carrying costs and all that, right? So. Hello, everybody. I am Jared. Hi, I'm Melinda. And welcome back to The Secret Life of Inventory. This is a show where we talk about everything inventory related. And in today's episode, we are going to be talking about the retail space. So anyone who's working, either if you've got a brick and mortar or you're working in e-commerce, doesn't matter if you're working in retail, we're going to be talking about all the different types of inventory that you're going to be dealing with, some of the, the benefits of having good inventory management, and some of the best practices that you can do to get your business running at a, like optimal speed. We'll also be exploring some real-world examples of good and bad inventory management. And in future episodes, we'll also be interviewing business owners to learn more about their tips and tricks. So be sure to stay tuned for more. So for those who want to understand the basics, can you explain to us what exactly is retail inventory management and what does that entail? So retail inventory management, um, for the most part, you're dealing with two different types of inventory. So you're dealing with either finished goods or you're dealing with packing materials. Mm -hmm. Now, before we get into those, I mean, I want to start off by saying that there there are certain retailers who actually do manufacture the products that they're you know, that they're selling to their customers. They're the kind of rare case. It doesn't generally manufacturers tend to, you know, they make big quantities of things and they sell those things to wholesalers. Right. But there are certain, like, for example, we have a customer Jacques organic chocolates. They're mm-hmm. based out of uh, California and what they do, their business model is they have an online store and their customer purchases the chocolates from that store. And then they manufacture the chocolates and they ship them directly to the mm-hmm. customer. So someone like that is, is, is they're a retailer, but they're also a manufacturer. So they have a lot of like, you know, raw materials, mm-hmm. a lot of other things to, to worry about, um, not just the finished goods and not just the packing material. So for this episode, we're only going to be focusing on people who are working in the retail space only. So people who are buying, you know, buying their products like wholesale, either from a wholesaler or a distributor or something, and then selling those products to their customers, right? Mm-hmm. So when we're talking about finished goods, um, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about things that are ready to go. They're on the shelf. They're ready to go to the customers, right? So that those are your products, obviously. And then we're talking about packing materials. They're equally as important as your finished goods, right? So we're talking. That's your boxes. Your you know, your tissue paper. Your bubble wrap. Uh, if you're bundling, sometimes you'll have like a special packaging mm-hmm. that you'd use for your bundling. All that stuff is um, is, is very important because. Ultimately, if you're selling something to a customer, so if you're selling, you know, say you're selling something that's really fragile, you know, like a, like a camera, for example, and you, uh, you, you have a great sale and you sell way more cameras than you expected, but you have the cameras, which is great, yeah. but you don't have the packing materials, right? So you don't have the, the special bubble wrap that you use to make sure that camera gets to the customer safe and sound. And not broken. <laughs> exactly. Like $5,000, $10,000. Kind of, right? <laughs> pretty important. Pretty important. So yeah. it's not like you can just sell, send that camera off without mm-hmm. the packing material, right? So then your shipment gets delayed and you have to wait for your pack material to come in. So one way or another, you're not, the customer is not getting the camera, even though you have the camera, they're still not getting it. Right. Yeah. So that's why packing material, don't sleep on packing material. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, that's, it's very, very important. <laughs> that's true. Like even when you're shopping, it's not just the shirt or pants that you're buying. It's also the bag that the shirt and pants go into that the retailer has to keep track of. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Are there any other types of retail inventory that people should be aware of? So I guess the best way to think about it is, is is breaking your finished goods down and kind of into different categories. So there's five main categories that you want to you want to think about when you're um, dealing with your finished goods. The first one is the ready for sale. So that's all your stuff that's like on the shelf. It's ready to go. Customers can buy it whenever they want. It's available for purchase, right? Now, it's pretty obvious when you're at a brick and mortar store if it's ready for sale. Because if it's not ready for sale, it's gone. The customer's taking it out the door. They pick it up off the shelf. They take it. And then it's gone, right? Mm -hmm. So it's more for e-commerce. When something's ready for sale and someone's purchased it, it moves into the next category. The second one, which is um, allocated. So it's... It may be on the shelf, and you may have it in your actual facility and your in your space, but it's actually not really there, so to speak, because it's already been sold to a customer, so it's allocated oh. to a sale, right? So you, you can't sell that again. You got to make sure that you're not just looking at your inventory and saying like, oh, I have this thing, I can sell it. Mm-hmm. But you don't know that you really have it, even if you're tracking your inventory on, you know, say, a spreadsheet or. Yeah, you know, I think this entire. Uh, podcast is me just talk poorly about about spreadsheets yeah. because yeah. Of PTSD. Yeah, exactly exactly right <laughs> so if you're, t- if you're using like a spreadsheet or manually or whatnot and you forget to maybe there's a lot of different salespeople that are working on something and some one of them forgets to update the spreadsheet saying that they you know sold 
this item, you see it on the spreadsheet. Oh, I have this. So then you sell it then you find out, oh no, uh, I actually don't have that thing. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's really important to make sure that you're labeling these things as they go down the process, yeah. you know, ready for sale into allocated and then into our next one, which is in transit. So in transit is essentially all of your products are actually in transit. It's in the name, obviously. Mm -hmm. So when it's, when you send it out from your facility or your storage warehouse or whatever, you've shipped it off. As it's on the way, until it gets to your customer, you're still liable for that thing, right? You're still that's still you know important to make sure that you understand that it's out there, it's still technically a part of your inventory, right? Until yeah. it reaches the customer's hands, the sale's not complete, right? So those are in transit, and again, you should be tracking from ready for sale to allocated to in transit, uh, and then the next one, of course, is well, actually the next two are pretty cr closely related, and those are safety stock and your seasonal. So first safety stock is something that you should always have, right? Yeah. Things will, are going to happen inevitably in business. We all know that things yeah. are going to happen. So it's important to have a, like a cushion, like backup. A, a backup plan. Yeah. A parachute. You don't want to jump out of a plane <laughs> without a parachute, right? So that's what safety die. stock is. <laughs> yes. And my, your business will die without yeah. safety stock. Yeah. Maybe not, but uh, it could. So it's more likely to, we'll say mm. that for sure. So yeah, it's, it's very important to have that on hand just in those what if moments, those just in case moments, mm -hmm. right? Now seasonal is a lot like safety stock, except it is, it's more for those moments that you can plan for, right? It's not the just in case. Like it's Valentine's like, Day, Black Friday. Exactly. Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Seasonal. You know? mm -hmm. So seasonal <laughs> things. And it could even just be like if you have, uh, if you're doing a really good uh, demand forecasting and you see that, oh, in this time of March, I usually sell a lot of this particular mm -hmm. product then you can prepare for them, get some extra seasonal inventory for that moment. Yeah. Right. So those are, the, I guess, the five main categories of your finished goods if you want to like break them down further. Mm -hmm. So now that we know what retail inventory management is, what are the benefits exactly of effective retail inventory management? I know. Okay. So it, do, it doesn't seem like a big deal, like whatever, like why is it so <laughs> important, right? Yeah, why should people actually care? <laughs> yeah. Why should people care? Right. But it is important because it, it can save you so, uh, so much time and money, <laughs> but um, just... Retail inventory management is all about having what you need to meet customer demands, but not having too much of it that mm -hmm. is going to eat into your cash flow and your carrying costs and all that, right? So it's going to save you money ultimately. At the end of the day, good retail inventory management, first and foremost, it's going to save you money because you're going to be reducing your carrying costs because you're going to be keeping just the right level of inventory. Mm -hmm. And you're also going to prevent yourself from actually getting dead stock. You know, and we'll get more into dead stock in future episodes, but for now, well, the TDLR of it is <laughs> um, products that essentially aren't going to sell. Products that you have that just are, people aren't buying anymore. They're sitting on the shelf. Maybe you're selling like one or two a year or something, yeah. but they're just eating up shelf space, right? And ultimately eating up into your carrying costs, eating up into your cash flow, mm -hmm. all that stuff, right? So you want to avoid dead stock from, you know, sometimes you can't avoid it. Sometimes you think something's going to sell really well and you get it and then just no one really wants it. Right. Um, yeah, and then other, until you try. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Dead stock is like, a, the, it's going to inevitably happen. You know, like when you're buying something there, the next best thing's going to come out. And then, mm -hmm. you know, like when a, a new version of something, a new version of a cell phone or a new version of like a bag or a jacket yeah. or whatever, that last version is going to be less desirable. People aren't going to really be yeah, everyone's chasing it. the new thing. Exactly. <laughs> Only the hipsters are going to yeah. buy that old thing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, and there's only so many hipsters out there, yeah. right? So you got to just like to avoid it. You can use forecasting to kind of see what's selling to avoid dead stock. So, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. You're going to save a lot of time. Ultimately, that's a big one too. I mean, time and money are related, but good retail inventory management is all about time savings, right? Mm -hmm. um, you don't think about it like much, like how much time you're going to save, but it, it is crazy how much time you save. Like think about, here's a great example. So say I, um, I love to cook and I, I'm really quick and I'm a great chef in my own <laughs> kitchen, right? I know where everything is. I'm, you know, I'm just a, a kind of a whirlwind in my own kitchen. I create something in like 20 minutes. I got a great meal. Awesome. I want to go over to my friend's house and I want to make that meal for them in mm -hmm. their kitchen. I have all my ingredients and everything, same setup, except I get into their kitchen and I don't know where anything is. Yeah. I got to spend half my time looking for where's that pot? Mm -hmm. Where's those utensils? So it takes me twice as much time to do that. Yeah. Inventory management is the same thing. If I know where things are, if I know, if everything's well organized mm -hmm. whatnot, it's going to create a really smooth flow and you're going to save, exactly. You're going to save so much, so much time. So mm -hmm. that's, that's a big one is the time saving. And ultimately like it's going to simplify the process. If the process is simple and you're saving a lot of time, that means you can scale and you can grow your business, yeah. which is huge. I mean, 
isn't that what everyone's the point dreaming? Is? <laughs> no. Make more money. I don't think everyone's <laughs> and, you know you like start off me. selling like twenty dollars a day in a product and you're like I'm happy with that. Yeah, I think I can retire on that. No, you want to you want to grow. You want to build an empire. That's what we're here <laughs> for, right? We want to build an empire. And how do you yeah. do that? You have to have a process and, and processes in place that are they're good to scale. You know, mm-hmm. essentially that's what it's all about. And I guess lastly, the thing about um, great inventory management in the retail space is better forecasting. Right? It's all about knowing what you need when you need it. Mm-hmm. And if you have the data to back up what, you know, what you've been selling, what, like, w- like how much of it you've been selling, you're going to be able to kind of, again, get what you need when you need it, buy the right products, understand your customers better, right? So you're going to just be a well-oiled machine, <laughs> you know? Yeah, there's that popular saying, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it, so. Exactly, yeah, that's mm-hmm. exactly what it's all about. It's all about the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so now that we know all of that, what are some best practices that business owners should keep in mind? The biggest thing is I, what I always tell people um, is to invest in an inventory management system. It's huge. It's going to save you a ton of time. Everything can, like our system, Inflow, for example, I mean, you can do purchase orders, sales orders. You know, you can pick, pack, and ship right in the app. Mm-hmm. You can use barcodes, and so you're just basically you're scanning out your items as you're picking them and packing them yeah. and shipping them off to your customers. So, like doing that, all that stuff is going to save you so much time, right? A couple other big ones that are just kind of like very common and something that everyone should be doing, especially in the retail space, is um, is carrying uh, safety stock. We talked about it before. Mm-hmm. Having uh, it's all about having that uh, stock at the right time when you need it. In case something happens, you know, we've seen supply chain issues in the last couple of years. So I think a lot of people are now understanding that you can't always expect things to happen when they're going to happen. Things are going to always come out of the blue and uh, messy up. So it's good to have that safety stock on hand for sure. Another big one, which is like, uh, people hate it. People hate it. Start a cycle count program. And it's like, it's very important. And even if you're using the best system in the world, there's going to be discrepancies between what you have in the system and what you have on the shelves, Mm -hmm. right? So starting a cycle count program is really great to just kind of keep up on that, making sure those numbers are matching and whatnot. So uh, doing that is great. And there's ways to do it that it's not so horrifying. The bigger the business, uh, the more you don't want to do it, but the more you kind of need to do it, right? Um, So you can kind of do it in, in... batches and sections if you really want Mm -hmm. you know kind of split it up into areas of your warehouse so maybe do like this wing of your warehouse one day this wing another day because when you're doing a cycle count program you kind of have to shut down everything the operations kind of have to stop that way you know there's nothing kind of we were talked about how things are allocated in different buckets Mm -hmm. right so your finished goods aren't moving from ready for sale into allocated while you're doing your cycle count because it's just going to mess everything up right so yeah um, the cycle counts is all like scanning and keeping track of the inventory levels like that right yeah it's just it's basically just counting all of the things that you have on your shelves and making sure that those numbers match what you have mm-hmm. in your system so it's just yeah it's just a lot faster too like beep 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 instead of like one two three exactly. four and then you like lose yeah. track again <laughs> wait <laughs> like, what was that what again was it? <laughs> yeah. you're like marking things off you're like you're in a prison cell you know like, <laughs> ch- 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 ticks <laughs> i never really thought about how much goes on behind the scenes with retail inventory management but i was doing some research on why some major retailers failed and do you remember forever 21 i uh, yeah i shop there all the time <laughs> <laughs> no of course yeah i remember forever 21 <laughs> yeah. well back when i was in high school that was one of my favorite stores and i remember mm. it was super popular so i was researching into forever 21 and it's actually an interesting backstory forever 21 started with two south korean immigrants who only had eleven thousand dollars in savings and they opened their first store in la And the original plan was to target younger people who didn't have a lot of money but wanted the latest looks. So they realized that they could capitalize on the fast fashion business model because they could mass produce a bunch of clothes at a very inexpensive rate and have quick turnovers. So in 2015, they actually peaked in $4.4 billion in sales and they had like 480 stores. But long story short, in 2017, they didn't anticipate the retail apocalypse, which is basically when e-commerce started to like dominate the market. So because of that, like they didn't stop to evaluate their plan. They just kept expanding and expanding. And if you think about it, Forever 21 is as big as like department stores. They're huge, mm-hmm. right? And because their focus was on fast fashion, they just had a bunch of excess inventory and that led to them having to like mark down the prices and eventually they had to file for bankruptcy in 2019. Yeah, see, access inventory, it kills you. It yeah. kills you. And I mean, a lot of that probably would end up being dead stock too because if it's fast fashion, the style mm. goes out before they can sell yeah. it. So yeah, 100%. So actually, I have an example of a really great company who does amazing inventory management i'm sure you've heard of them uh, walmart <laughs> have you heard of walmart of yeah. course you have everyone's heard of walmart and the reason for that is because they have dominated 
the retail landscape over mm-hmm. the last uh, couple decades. They actually put an entire retail uh, juggernaut out of business, uh, Kmart. So back in the 90s, there was basically what would they called the, the price wars that was going on. And essentially what was happening was all these big box stores were trying to compete to have the lowest mm-hmm. prices to draw in those customers because a lot of them were selling the same brands, the same products. So it was all about getting the lowest price to the customer because they're going to go where the lowest price is, obviously, right? They want the best deal. It's mm-hmm. good. Save <laughs> Everyone <money. laughs> wants the best deal. It's, I mean, that's, that's a no-brainer, right? So at the time, Walmart actually implemented uh, just-in-time inventory, right? So it's a system all about lean, being lean, getting everything you need just in time, right when you need it. So nothing sitting on the shelves for too long. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, and it was a huge advantage then. It gave them more visibility into like what was being purchased by their customers. So it gave them a lot better insight. Uh, it also gave them more cash flow because they're not buying too much of things and storing them, eating up carrying costs and all that one, all that stuff, not wonderful stuff, all that stuff, <laughs> right? And they reinvested all the money that they're saving back into the business, right? So now they're able to expand and whatnot, and they're they're lowering their overhead by doing this mm-hmm. as well. So they pass that savings on to the customer, which is great because it gives them then the lowest prices, right? So they're starting to absolutely clobber Kmart, and it's all in the numbers. You can see it, and I think in the course of like five or six years, Kmart's stock dropped by like 60% while Walmart's like rose by like 80%. That's you like could just see this complete dive <laughs> yeah. like in the opposite directions, you know? Um, and it was all basically attributed to their just-in-time in- inventory management. So they like, it was huge. And they essentially, Kmart just didn't change while Walmart did. They just kept up with the same inventory management um, techniques that they were using and it crushed them and absolutely crushed them. They ended up having to sell their company to Sears, um, I think in 2005. Yeah. Um, and that was the end of Kmart. I was actually looking to Sears as well and why it failed. <laughs> Cause like, I remember Sears was really big when I was young too and one day just disappeared. And apparently one of the biggest mistakes that Sears ever made was buying or merging with Kmart. Because back then Sears held like a unique position in the market, but as soon as they merged with Kmart, which was known as a deep discount brand, it lowered their value. Mm-hmm. And that put them into direct competition with Walmart and Target. And at the same time, other specialty upscale stores like Gap posed a huge threat to Sears. Cause you know, like no one really brags about, oh, I'm wearing like Sears clothes or whatever but like back then when you wore gap it was more exclusive and more like cool so because the company sales dropped like crazy the suppliers straight up just stopped supplying like tvs books toys and everything to sears because they're worried that the retailer wouldn't be able to pay its bills (laughs) so yeah towards the end of the day they got cut off yeah (laughs) they got cut off hard yeah just like suppliers just stopped sending stuff to sears and then the inventory was super low and empty like just poorly stocked and that's why Mm. Sears died. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, they picked up a sinking ship, you know, Mm -hmm. and uh, you're saying that it it put them, it pitted them against Walmart. Don't do that. (laughs) Don't, don't do that. Walmart's inventory management Mm -hmm. is on point. Yeah. It's just just interesting how like your reputation, how that affects your business too. Like Mm. even if Sears has good products, but people see you as like a low discount or like you're kind of like, you're stuck in the middle. Like that's the danger. You're not, you're not like budget enough for like people who want good deals, but then you're also not like expensive enough to be like trendy. A bit of an identity crisis. Yeah. Just like in the middle of who am I? (laughs) Who am I? Where am I? What is the meaning of all this? (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, Another example of Walmart's uh, great inventory management is they use RFIDs, stands for Radio Frequency Identification Tags. So um, what it is, essentially, they're barcodes um, that are like in the air, in the clouds. <laughs> they're radio frequencies, right? So you can actually scan um, items without having a line of sight. And it's great for obvious reasons for mm-hmm. um, for Walmart. So they've mandated that coming up in uh, February for like a whole bunch of... They've already had some mandates uh, on some product types. But they're mandating it for almost just about every product type uh, yeah. coming up in February. So they're not messing around when it comes to inventory <laughs> management. If you want to sell your items through Walmart, you better, you know, get hop a, you better RFIDs. hop on the inventory <laughs> yeah. management bus because, yeah. you know, <laughs> we're headed to organization town, baby. <laughs> yeah, I remember talking to one of my friends. Um, they work at Uniqlo and I was just asking them, like, oh, how does Uniqlo manage their inventory? And they mentioned RFIDs as well. Like they just have this RFID gun and they if you're looking for a specific size and color, it's like a dog finding drugs. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like, boop, boop. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. finding metal on the, on the beach kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, no, I, I love um, Uniqlo too. Uh, they actually utilize, not just for their inventory management, they actually utilize the RFIDs for checkout too. Oh, yeah. You just go to the checkout and you dump all your stuff into, into a like a, a box. Yeah. yeah. And it just, some like magic baby. It just like, <laughs> all of it gets rung up immediately, yeah. which is super, super cool. You don't cool. need people to manage it. You can mm-hmm. all self-checkout. Yeah. It's 
uh, people are just going to be uh, obsolete soon, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's great for, it's a dual purpose, right? So it's great for inventory management. And it's also great for like actually checking out the whole process. It kind of mm-hmm. can take a take a, a part in, which is pretty, yeah. really, really awesome. Yeah, the first time I saw that checkout system was actually in Singapore. There's this huge sporting goods store called Decathlon and mm-hmm. they use that same checkout system. And they recently um, opened up stores in Canada too. I don't know why everyone doesn't do it to be perfectly <laughs> honest i would love uh you know i think um the amazon store if uh, they have those amazon go stores where you uh, go in and it makes you feel like you're stealing everything because <laughs> you just kind of walk in and you pick things up off the shelf oh, I've never and then it. you walk out and then it just charges your your card because uh yeah i think that i think i'm pretty oh. sure they use rfid for that so mm. they're like basically tracking what you're picking up yeah and then as you leave it kind of like you know puts it onto your Amazon oh. bill or whatever. Yeah, so it does make you feel like you're stealing though, for sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Like, don't I need to talk to someone yeah. about this? Yeah. But yeah, you just leave and uh, everything's all good. So mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> so that wraps up our episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And if you're interested in learning more about inventory management, make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Yes, thanks so much for listening, watching, however you're consuming the content. Um, please share with your friends, your family, your coworkers, your pets, that's whoever uh, you think would be interested. Um, leave a comment down below if you want. Um, if you have an idea for a future episode, please leave a comment down below and we will do our best to get into that in a future episode. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>